Hello, everybody, and I hope that you can hear me well and that this is uh, okay quality. I don't have a sophisticated web camera, so I'm using what's uh, running off of my computer. But I just wanted to offer a few thoughts and a few offer maybe even a few questions for about 15 minutes and Allow me to say, if you hear some noises, I apologize. That's coming from upstairs from the um, other tenant that's upstairs. So basically what I just wanted to discuss real quick is the nature of um, intelligence, meaning that kind of intelligence that we do for the government. And in government intelligence, um, one of the um, there are a lot of groups out there doing intelligence right now, different forms of intelligence, business intelligence, economic intelligence, uh, intelligence covering national defense, national security. Uh, and then there are groups that are doing security. And sometimes those are broken down into personal security and safety. And one of those companies that comes to mind is Max Security. And so they do a lot of personal uh, body protection type of security. And in order to perform that and also to help serve their clients, they give a lot of intelligence on developing situations and crises. And they largely deal with, or they deal with a lot of things around the world mainly defense analysis, foreign policy analysis, but again, their coverage is worldwide. Uh, there are the startup intelligence companies and many, and Bowden Intelligence is included in that. And um, somebody has asked a very cogent question, uh, particularly on YouTube and YouTube videos about whether some of these videos disclose too many national uh, defense secrets. Uh, now, a lot of what these videos are covering is already declassified information and provided by the Defense Department. I know that information and provided by the Defense Department. I know that even I have shared on LinkedIn information that is uh, from the net, from the Department of Defense and has been given over. We ran it on a Thursday or Friday, and then by that Monday, the national news coverage of it had picked up. Uh, that was on an issue regarding Ukraine. Uh, Bowden Intelligence usually focuses on um, Middle Eastern, uh, and Middle Eastern concerns usually revolving around military operations, but we've also covered things like food and bread riots and changing economics in these different countries because national security and national defense uh, can often hinge on very specific social situations and social crises. So all of these issues pour into each other. But again, the question is, are we disclosing too much? Are we as intelligence groups or businesses divulging things which should remain a secret? Are these things that we should be reserving for ourselves and say yes, because we know, th and likely I know, that Bowden Intelligence probably has a few followers who represent national intelligence agencies following to understand what we may know or what we may think we know or Maybe they're trying to gain information on adversaries and they use us as intermediaries without our knowledge. Uh, <clears throat> so we are guarded in some of the things that we disclose, but also in an effort to serve our potential client base, we also want to demonstrate that we have the capability and the reliability to perform the task that we are stating that we can, and that is providing good, timely intelligence for the Middle East. 
Now, in some instances, we've had to scale back that responsibility because of new commitments that I, the founder, have taken on. But also there are limitations uh, specifically for the fact that um, right now I have probably two other very active partners involved in this. But uh, that can sometimes be hit and miss, and generally I'm by myself. So sometimes I'm not able to provide as much detail as I would like. But getting back to the topic, are there a lot of people doing this intelligence operation and giving this intelligence information, and are they divulging too much? In a rush to be competitive, in a rush to be first, in a rush to be noticed, and uh, to be the new it boy or it girl to go to for intelligence, can we sometimes lose sight of the commitments that we need to have? <clears throat> and sometimes for, I think Americans have a unique position and probably even people in Britain and some of the other Western or Western oriented countries like Australia uh, France and those places, you know, we have access to more government information and details than many people in third world countries. So you don't see as many people in the third world or second world uh, able to produce such intelligence. Usually they are ending up being the clientele. So the question again comes down to are we sharing too much? Are we sharing too little? And, you know, where, where do we find the balance in that? And uh, I, I just want to give this over as kind of an opportunity to uh, begin a discussion about that and also discuss some things about the and I'd like to do a fuller presentation on this topic, the topic of are there too many groups out there trying to cover the same information, you know, the the hyper-redundancy. Uh, I know that I can search on LinkedIn or many other web uh, job websites and come up with multiple, multiple hits, uh, sometimes in the 20s or the 30s of different companies working on largely the same operation. But one of the trends that I have noticed is that often they will identify themselves as, as having maybe one to 10 employees, one to 50 employees, or one to 100 employees. A lot of the ones that are actively hiring are not the major ones out there. And there are a few major ones and there are a lot of minor ones. And sometimes I have been led to wonder whether a conference needs to be established amongst the heads of the more successful smaller intel agencies or businesses out there and to see if it would not serve a better purpose to combine and to unify because the market can only handle so many intelligence groups and there can only be so many specialties that are able to be handed out here and there uh, and and i think specialty is going to be something that is much more necessary in such a fractured market uh, again bowden intelligence does middle east and we try to circumscribe a very narrow realm around that uh, and make a very concise definition of what we're counting as Middle East. I typically don't even count Turkey or Iran as Middle Eastern countries, maybe Near Eastern. Uh, definitely, uh, I see Iran as a Persian nation, as well as Western Central Asia, if I can use that term. But it's not Middle East. It has its focus in the Middle East. It has a great amount of its foreign policy focused and viewed uh, by the Middle East. But it's also got Central Asian concerns, particularly with Afghanistan, uh, Tur Turkmenistan, Pakistan, and India. Uh, so they are a nation that tends to look both ways 
in some measure, and they have to accommodate two different types of cultural zones and do so with fluency and knowledge. Uh, Turkey is uh, Turkic, uh, Altai, and so that is a totally different ethnic group than the major Arab uh, group, cultural group in the Middle East. They use, uh, you know, as you know, the Iranians use Persian, and they will they interpret the Quran in the terms of the uh, Persian. And when I was talking to a Turkish woman, she stated that she, her only knowledge of Arabic was that which was mediated through the Quran, but she spoke Turkic. And so the, the connections that Turkey has with uh, the Middle East, even historically, we know have been very tendentious. Uh, Turkey has tended to look towards Europe for the majority of its foreign policy, and certainly as a European power, it had the Balkans and had significant holdings in, up in the Balkans as well as up into the, uh, if I'm correct and not mistaken, the Romanian area. And the Turks, uh, the Ottomans, uh, tended to focus much more on that. They did have possessions, obviously, in the Middle East, but much of the Middle East was an Ottoman backwater. It was just uh, largely ignored and given short thrift uh, during that period of time. So we, we do tend to look, as Bowden Intelligence Group tends to look there, but there are other companies that look at European companies, or countries, excuse me. Uh, some specialize in Southeastern or Southwestern Asia or Central Asia. So would it benefit the marketplace? And would it benefit people overall who are looking for intelligence to know that they can go to one company that has all these different categories under one umbrella group. Uh, so if somebody needs intelligence from the Middle East, you can go to that company and find it. If you need something for <clears throat> uh, a different region, you can find it. Uh, <clears throat> Again, can we make the marketplace more competitive by making it less fractured and more unified and therefore stronger? So a couple of different thoughts, uh, not wholly connected, but again, number one, are I guess maybe in some ways they are connected. Are we in such a competitive rush against everybody else that we feel like we may need to put something and splash it across our web page or up on LinkedIn or something like that in order to get hits and likes and all kinds of stuff, and that's good. But do we run those things too quickly without the thought process of what the outcome will be? And again, the other is, is the marketplace so fractured that it really creates more of a uh, downturn in the quality and the capability and the support that we could be giving clients if we were able to combine efforts and become a little bit more cohesive. Certainly, my hope for Bowden Intelligence Group was that I could turn to different experts who deal with the Middle East or even deal with. Uh, areas external to it. Our intent was to be a group. Obviously, at some point, I, I do hope to turn it into a functioning, fully functional business. But again, the, the idea and the hope has been to also have it to be supported by a number of people who are invested in the outcome and who can contribute because I know that, uh, let me just put it this way, there is more that I would like to do. And there are people out there that I know they have great opportunities, they have great insights, and they have great access. And to be able to tap into that and bring greater quality 
would be uh, something that I would enjoy very much. So thank you for bearing with me. I hope maybe sometime to make these a little bit uh, more regular and definitely a lot more specific over the entire video. Thank you.